Hi everyone, this is Medina, a car artist and video game developer. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through my process of how we can approach texturing leather. We'll create two types of leather using a non-destructive approach, and then we'll combine those two to create a quick third variation. This tutorial is suitable for absolute beginners, and I'll do my best to show you how easy it is to use Substance Painter for character assets. In this chapter, we're going to look at how we can add some additional height and normal details to our jacket. If you look at our reference, you can see that there are some small creases here and there. We can quickly add those on a layer using a procedural texture. Create a fill layer and turn everything off except the height channel. Bring in your shelf and drag and drop this creased texture directly to the height slot. Now, as you can see, the creases are all over the jacket at the moment. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to add a curvature mask to mask out the unnecessary creases. I'm going to play with the parameters of the mask to see how far I can push it procedurally. If you want to adjust the overall intensity of the creases, go to the height channel and then adjust the intensity of the layer. I think I'm quite happy with the settings. Let's check the results with a better lighting. That's not too bad. The additional creases are doing a great job adding a complexity to the jacket, but we don't have to cover the whole jacket with the creases really. Just a few here and there are already enough to improve the asset. One other thing I would like to do is to add some of these large leather grain pattern. You can see it around the bending areas of our jacket. The shoulder area here has some large leather pattern. You can see it on the collar as well. I'm going to check if there is anything on Substance Source that resembles the large leather pattern that I'm looking for. Let's see what we have here. Just going to bring in my reference. So I'm looking to find something that has this long creases. This material would not work. Let's check this one. This one could work, but it feels a bit too stylized for our case. No. This one looks pretty good. The lines are similar to the ones I have in my reference. I'm going to download that and drag and drop the file into my shelf. 
set it as a base material, just like before, import it to shelf. There we go. Let's go ahead and add this material on top of our layers. Adjust the tiling and disable all the channels except for the normal. I'm going to decrease the intensity of the layer. Let's just quickly see if replace mode gives us a better result. Not much of a difference, so I'm going to undo that. Now I'm going to set a curvature mask that will attract this leather pattern to the large bending areas. The process is exactly the same. Add a mask with a generator and select curvature. There we go. The scale of the pattern looks good, but I think the horizontal creases are a bit more frequent than my reference. I'm going to turn off this lock icon and increase the vertical tiling. That's not too bad. The mask might be a bit too sharp. Let's blur it a little bit. All right, that's pretty nice. Next, let's take care of the shoulder area. These creases over here. Duplicate the layer. Let's quickly rename them to keep things nice and clean. I'm going to add a white mask to remove the previous adjustments and turn off this layer so that we can focus on our current layer. I will also turn on the color channel, just temporary, so that we can see the new pattern better. Change the rotation and adjust the tiling to match the scale of your reference. That should work. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to set my mask to black to hide the pattern completely. I'm going to use a white soft brush and I'm going to paint in my new pattern in the areas that I want. Simply right click on the layer and choose add black mask. Right click on the mask and choose add paint. Make sure both your paint layer and paint tool are selected. Set your stroke opacity somewhere around 50 and start painting in the areas you would like to have the pattern.
If you want to paint out the pattern, hit the X button on your keyboard. That will change the color of your brush to black and you will be able to paint out the unnecessary details. If the pattern stands out too much, use a low stroke opacity and a black color and brush the areas where the pattern stops abruptly. That should help you to blend the details nicely. All right, that turned out pretty good. Let's check the model with a different lighting. Not too bad. I'm pretty happy with the results, so I'll go ahead and save it as a smart material. Just like before, create a group. Select the top and the bottom layer. Drag the selection to the group. Rename your group. Right click and choose Create Smart Material. If you want to see how this material can be used along with the suede we've created in the beginning of our course, I would really recommend checking out the next chapter. That's going to be a time lapse where I will be combining our two materials to create a quick third variation.